Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video, but it has been busy. Arthur is walking and he is impossible to control. But work has been very busy. I've been to three almost international events in the last kind of month and a half. So I've been traveling a lot. Just meant that I haven't had much time to kind of sit down and make a video. Now you might have noticed that I'm not playing Wild Rift. I'm not playing TFT. And there is a reason for that. You might have heard me talk about it in my video about it sucks getting old. And it's just because that these kind of competitive games, I find very difficult to keep up with the less and less time I have in life. So I have been searching for mobile games that I can enjoy in the same kind of way that I did PC games in my early 20s on my mobile. I can commit a small amount of time to them and I'll feel like I'll get a, a progressive amount of enjoyment. And that's what this series is about. We are finding underrated mobile games that are just good. Good mobile games. No freemium crap. No ridiculous pay-to-win progression unless the game is really good. We are just looking at good mobile games and especially underrated good mobile games. So if you're watching and you have an underrated good mobile game that you want more people to play, um, and I'm not talking like Wild Rift, I'm not talking like Mobile Legends, like a really underrated good mobile game, stick it in the comments. I might play it and I might make a video on it. The one that I'm going to talk about today is a game that I have spent hours upon hours upon hours playing, Dawncaster, uh, it's deck building RPG. When I downloaded it, it only had 10k downloads, but it's now got 50k, so it's obviously getting a bit of momentum. Very strong game, it is a premium game, so it means that you do play it, you do have to pay to play it. But it is fantastic, it is worth every single penny to play this game. It, I've, I've spent more hours in this game over the last month than I have done in most of my PC games that cost about 10 times the amount. It has got everything that you'd expect from a premium game at a relatively low price cost. And I wanna show you a little bit about the game today. So the, the video is gonna go like this. I am gonna give a brief intro to the game. I'm gonna tell you the positives. I'm gonna tell you the negatives, and then we're gonna do a playthrough, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do over the course of this video. Let's start with the intro to the game. So this game is essentially a roguelike deck builder, uh, kind of like an adventure series. If any of you have ever played Slay the Spire, it is very similar to that. There are lots of games on the market that do this kind of style of play. Dawncaster is just another version of that. But it's really cool, and I would argue that it has some of the best deck building that I've played in one of these types of games before. There is a lot of variety to what you can do, and that's kind of helped by the number of classes that you have access to, but also just the way the mana system works. So I'll, I'll briefly show you... Um, I'll play Arcanist, right? Uh, I haven't played this guy's portrait. I've got access to a few different types of weapons here, but maybe I'll go for the for Scepter for the Firecast version. So you choose a weapon. You can then choose a rare card, and usually they kind of go together. Fleeting Thoughts. We'll try the Fire Mage this time around. Right. You may have noticed that there were those little blue circles on some of my cards there are three types of mana in this game or energy there is blue there is green and there is red and there is actually also yellow but i'll talk about that in a minute think of it a little bit like magic the gathering right certain cards cost certain colors of mana to play but not every class has access to every type of mana You'll have classes that have access to blue only, classes that have access to green only, classes that have access to red only, and then classes that have access to a mix of the both. So there are some that have green and blue, some that have green and red, and some that have red and green. There is also a fourth type of mana called holy. It's yellow, uh, and anybody has access to that, but you do need to have specific cards or specific talents to get there. So you have a lot of kind of intricate classes that all do different things and you'll notice that they have access to different weapons they have access to different special cards to begin with um etc the weapon is your basic attack but it also has you have a weapon power so the scepter is my basic attack but there is also a weapon power associated with it and then i have this kind of uh rare card at the beginning that kind of forms the basis of my deck throughout the course of the game you are going to get the options to add more cards to your deck or remove cards from your deck. 
you're going to have the option to add specific talents or unique abilities which will help enhance the way that you play and in general throughout the course of each game that you play you'll craft a unique deck that has a specific purpose either it can get really broken or you can slog it along there's lots of different ways to play and that's what i really love about this game the replayability of it is very high there's also loads of choices in the game so you're going to have choices on certain events you're going to have choices kind of in the story mission i would say and i'll talk about it in the positive and negatives the choices are fun but don't always matter as much as maybe i wish they did but it's quite a linear game in the sense that you're going from point a to point b and you can kind of wiggle your way there but you're always going to get to point b to end the game so it's point a to point b and that's it but then most you know even slay the spire is like that right you're you really are going point a to point b but you're just choosing a slightly different path um, but we'll talk about the positive and the negatives now. So let, let's start with the positives. It's a great deck builder. One of the best deck builders that I've ever played. If you really like a deck builder game, you like going through levels and choosing cards and kind of using your brain to, to piece together this amalgam of a deck to create something that you feel is really powerful. Great, great for that. Loads of content. Um, and it's partially due to the DLCs. Uh, there are loads. The way that this game makes money, you might be wondering how this game makes money. Um, it has dlcs what i would say is that i mean these these are just support the dev type things but there are now three dlcs i'm actually going to buy this dlc for the playthrough one second all right we've bought the uh we've bought the dlc so there are dlcs the base game costs i think it costs like five dollars or something but then every dlc is a little bit more expensive the dlcs are good you get quite a lot of cards in them there's a bit of content in them as well not as much as the base game but I understand that's the dev's model. I would prefer to have a model like this for making money in games than kind of pay to win or, or sort of freemium options. The devs are very upfront. They they produce a load of content and then they offer they sort of, they want you to pay for it, which is very fair. The game is still incredibly enjoyable in the base game, and I would thoroughly recommend that you play through the base game before trying to add the DLCs in randomly. Um, the DLCs add new cards, new sort of paths that you can take. It's better if you play the base game for a bit and then say, okay, I want to add some extra variety in the way that I'm playing this game. Uh, there's lots of replayability because there is just so many different play styles with all different classes and so many different types of decks that you can make. And what's even more is that if, if you don't want to play the original story, there's something called the Sunforge. And the Sunforge is essentially the arena mode where you get to craft a deck and then just take on monsters until you can sort of until you die, basically. So you just attack monsters after monster after monster and you add you add talents and you level up. But it's essentially that arena mode, which is if you don't want to play through the story, you don't want all, want all the hassle of that, but you just want to craft a deck. Arena mode is pretty good for that as well. That's called the Sunforge. Um, and there's really nice progression in the game. So as, as I mentioned, there's loads of different characters. Um, one of the characters that I really suck with is the Seeker. I just can't, haven't figured out to play the Seeker properly. But, you know, you can unlock different portraits, which are really just aesthetic. You, you can then unlock loads of different weapons, as you can see. So you have to level up each character to unlock different play styles and different weapons. There's then, there's then different starting, uh, different starting um, uh, weapon powers and then also different starting uh special cards like additional cards so loads of progression in the game and you can also uh, i might be able to show you it also has the cards that you've unlocked so there's talents which i haven't even locked all the talents yet there is cards um and you can see loads of different types of cards of strength intelligence and you've got you got all the different sort of there's neutral cards as well etc so there's still a stuff that i haven't unlocked yet plenty of progression plenty of content to un, uh to sort of find beneath the surface and i think got a lot of playtime for a five dollar game plenty of playtime in here some of the negatives then not as varied as competitors and i'd say that is because when you play through the game and i'm not going to spoil it for you but when you play through the game you will find that um the game feels more linear than something like slay the spire you kind of have to go through the motions with some of the levels. The variety comes in the deck building and the way that you build your character, as opposed to kind of the monsters that you expect to meet and some of the choices that you expect to make. In Slay the Spire, it it, make, it probably gives you a false sense of illusion. And if you guys have seen the map in Slay the Spire, you have lots of different paths. It gives you a bit of a false sense of illusion, but that false sense of illusion is enough to make you feel like you're doing something slightly different every time. You'll see when I do the playthrough, you have a choice at every round, but realistically, 
you have to face some of those choices absolutely guaranteed as you play through each level um the dlc whilst i think is a great way of the devs ensuring that they have the sustainability and profitability it's a little expensive you know it's it's more expensive than the base game they've gone for kind of like the paradox entertainment route um and the content isn't as but you don't get as much content per dlc usually as the base game not saying that that's a bad thing well it is kind of i'm putting it in the negative section so it kind of is a bad thing but yeah I, the, the dlc just feels a little expensive i'm not complaining i've spent about 20 dollars on the base game and all of the dlcs and it's a hundred percent worth it so many hours in this game and the devs deserve to have the money in their back pockets because they've done a good job but ever so slightly expensive you know it could be one or two dollars less and i'd feel more comfortable but i understand where the devs have gone the way they've gone with the pricing model and actually i applaud it compared to sort of like i said those pay to win freemium options it can get a bit repetitive this game as you play through more and more classes the the story even when you have the dlc branching story paths um once you've played through them once not much changes beyond that you know there isn't as much there isn't as much of that false illusion of choice as there is with some of these other types of games um i think because on those other types of games you have more sort of branching pathways at every step uh whereas on this you kind of have a linear set of three choices every single time and you'll see when i play the game but it just it can get can feel a little repetitive and especially when you like lose a run and you're like oh i've got to go through all that again I, it didn't bother me because I love the game and I love the deck building part of it, but there is that repetitiveness to it that um, you, you expect with the roguelike, but it just feels a bit more pronounced in this game uh, because they it, they don't really they don't take some choices away from you. That's the that's the way I'd put it. You can, and I do because I'm a completionist, kill every single monster on a level. Um, you don't have to, but you can. So it's not like when you skip a monster, you're never going to see that monster again. That monster card stays there until you either choose to ignore it or deal with it down the line. The only things that do disappear are, some, are things called opportunities, and they are like the random events. So if you don't choose an opportunity when it presents it to itself to you, it it goes, um, which kind of forces this. It, it makes the it makes the game sense that when an opportunity comes up, you pretty much always click on it because you know that the other cards will will appear that again somewhere. Your other choices will appear again somewhere in that level. So you pretty much always go for the opportunity because realistically, none of the other choices will disappear and the opportunity will always disappear. And there's always that chance for the opportunity to be a good thing. Um, and I also wish some of the story choices kind of altered the outcome of the story more. Uh, they do kind of alter some things and you'll notice that with some of the choices that you make in game but not not like massive amounts of things and that's that's the, i don't want to spoil it but that's that's what i'll say so that's that's the game uh what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do a little playthrough um i kind of want to yeah play through a game with you guys and then i'll probably chop it up a little bit just so i can get through the first level and then maybe the second level i probably won't do the whole thing because that'll be like an hour or so but I will up. I will do enough so you get a good grasp on what the game is, and then you can kind of see whether you like it or not. All of this will be in timestamps in the description below, of course. But let's do one little playthrough of this so you can kind of figure out whether you like it, and then I'll put links also to this game in the description so you can go ahead and click on it and uh, check it out. Right, we're still going to play the Arcanist. I like the Arcanist, um, and I haven't done a fire version. Oh, bloody hell! What have I done there? Right, let's go back again. I haven't done the Arcanist for a while. Let's do the fire. Arcane weapon. Use your magic power to gain. Yeah. Gain the fire immunity talent. Well, I guess I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go all down the fire route here. So we're gonna go like this. You can select to have all cards, which I will. You can select the next map, which I will, and you can choose it to be normal, challenging, hard mode, impossible. I'm just gonna go for normal because I still don't feel comfortable taking on the hard mode yet. I'm still trying to work out how to build good decks. And I'm playing this on my um, on my Samsung Galaxy Tab, by the way. So there is this story, and you can kind of talk about kind of the background of the story. They kind of give you a kind of a, a sort of a bit of lore. There's good lore to this game, to be fair. Uh, but I don't want to read it because I've read it about 50 times. So I'm just going to take the gold and go. Now, this is what I mean about opportunity, right? So campsite means I can rest, um, and I can also remove a card from my uh deck if i want to crimson great grave robber he's quite a hard unit um at least for this stage 
opportunity. If I don't take opportunity, it will disappear. The campsite will not, and the crimson robber will not either. You can notice that there's, there's kind of cards dealt to you that you choose the card that you want to progress with. So I, I take the opportunity because the other cards will come back. Okay, so I just get a bit of gold. This is a really... I mean, I have to do this now. So this is a... Um, you kind of get choices that matter in the context of the level that you're playing. So I can choose to open the grave or leave the grave undisturbed. If I open the grave, enemies will get one extra anger, which means they'll deal one damage with all of their um, melee abilities, I think. Or I can leave the grave undisturbed. If I open the grave, you can get sometimes a good card. So take zero damage. Yeah, that's a really, really, really good card to have this early on in the game. So that was good. That was worth it. Now I just got a choice of basically three three pretty basic minions. Brains. Fair enough. So I'm going to use the draw to then upgrade this by two. One use gain to maximum health. Okay, so I just want to keep that. I kind of want to keep that in my deck for the time being. Um, he is going to deal some kind of damage so i'm gonna block but i'm not gonna block two times because the mana um persists between turns and unless you get interrupted which is a, a sort of status effect it won't make a difference so this will do reduce the cost of card in hand at the beginning to zero at the beginning round. fair enough i'll do this and i will burn him again i'll add some burning Ooh, free free Three, and he has got six damage, but he won't take that damage until the end of his turn. Which means I will take a load of damage, unfortunately. Okay. First aid kit, cool the storm. First aid kit's pretty good because I am a little bit low in HP. So shrine, broken grave, or restless ghoul. The shrines give you kind of specific effects. So I can transform a card if I want. I think it transforms it to something of a similar... So if I transform a scepter, I'll get a potion, I think. And to be completely honest with you, a healing potion sounds pretty good right now. <laughs> Broken grave. I'm probably not going to break the second grave. I have to take the opportunity. Okay, th this is good because I just get free HP. Restless ghoul. So my deck is appears to be about just burning stuff, but I also have the opportunity to. So this is this is um gone to four. I want to draw that as much as possible. Uh, because the more I draw it, the more it gets upgraded, and then therefore the more uh, the like like so I can like power out you know like I can power out a huge um second. So the bandage just gives me four HP back. So I can basically power out a huge amount of extra maximum HP. So the longer I have it in my deck, the more it the more benefit I get from it being there. I might actually just block and hopefully next turn I will draw that chalice again. If I draw that chalice again, it will upgrade again and I'll get um, another option to get maximum HP. So I don't yet. He is just going to die next turn. So... I might just take the healing potion, honestly. The healing potion gets better when you're below 50% HP, but I might as well thin my deck out a little bit. Pull from the Aether. Conch and, uh, fast forward. I quite like fast forward. Fast forward's a pretty good card, in, in my opinion, but you do need to get above 20. Now, Abomination is good because you, he basically doubles his status effects on him. So I'm, I, I inflict burning, so I should be able to take him down pretty quickly. That's upgraded again. So I don't... Do I want to do this? I don't know if there's even any point doing that at the moment. Um, so he'll very quickly die, but he will also deal a lot of damage to me. I'm going to do... I kind of want to inflict too slow on him, but that's only going to be for the things that he draws next. But that's good, because he's only got two healing ones this turn, but when he draws things next turn, they'll be harder to cast. That. First aid kicks. I might as well just take the bandages, and then I'll just lock for myself. So... Does that not get affected by slow? Okay, never mind. 
He should be dead next turn. Yeah, he's dead this turn. Alright, that wasn't too bad. If the target is burning, gain if the target is burning. Cool, that's good. We want Syria. We also want to add to our deck because we've got Scholar. Oh, nice. I didn't, I've never had the option before. I've never had the option to burn that guy. Um, which is good. So this this guy up above here is someone that I think I have to kill to progress the mission. This, this one in the middle. I think I have to kill him to progress the mission. But I want to kill... I like to kill everything because it gets me the most options to find cards. So he's burning. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm actually just going to do this and heal myself. This guy doesn't do a huge amount of damage. So evasion shouldn't matter for me because I deal magic damage. And again, this is now get, gain maximum HP, which is great. I'm just going to block. Uh, infected matters because uh, it deals damage to me if I don't use everything in my hand. So I'm going to have to use try and use everything in my hand. Uh, I got two infected now. Hopefully I can kill him this turn. Yeah. And then I'll just inflict too slow. Infected. Is he going to deal more? Okay, he will actually deal damage to me, but he won't deal any damage to me. Great. Fireball. Singe. Inflict burning equal to half the damage dealt. I feel like I need chain to make this fireball better. Removes the top card of your deck from combat. I'll take fireball just because it's. Uh, I feel like you need chain to make that better. I have to take the again. I have to take the opportunity. Should I eat the mushrooms? Oh, I've been poisoned. Well, I couldn't remember how that one went. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take on the Crimson Grave Robber. You've got to kill this guy in four turns. But with Fireball, I feel like I should be able to do that. This is now 10, but I'm going to keep going with it. Oh, I actually... You kind of have to deal damage to this guy as quickly as possible. I'm also going to have to rest, I think, at a campsite. Taking a lot of damage right now. Um, yeah. I'll Fireball him. I only did four damage for some reason. So I've got two turns to get him down. I think this should, should be fine this turn, I hope. Okay. This should be okay now. Okay. Fine, we just just about killed him. Here we go. Healing from inns always feels you to full health. Or whenever you defeat a boss, gain 50 gold. I think like faster recovery needs to be the play here. Got another fireball. So I'm actually gonna do this and I'm, I am gonna heal. It takes me to full HP. So that's really good because I was taking a load of damage. You can also re-roll talents if you want. Oh, that's why I'm taking so much damage. It deals mega tons of damage. Oh, it deals the... Oh, yeah. Now it makes a lot of sense. I'll probably only let that stack for a little bit more. I'll, I'll stack it as much as I can and heal up again once and then just take the massive boon in... Um, I want to take the massive boon. Do that. Do that. And that should kill him. Okay, now he's dead. Cool, cool. Flash freeze, lightning bolt, mind flash. Nope, none of those are any good. 
don't think I'm just going to leave this the grave undisturbed. Right, so this is the this is the end. This is the final boss. Um, what I think would be good is to heal now, kill him, come back out. I might let this. I might let. I'll let this thing. If this thing pops up now, which it doesn't. Um, I'm going to inflict too slow. Eventually, that card will inflict all of those, but I need to get more than 20 cards in my deck. So that's why I need to just find like the right cards to add to my deck, essentially. Um, that. 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 I just want to burn, like, add the burning as much as possible. Okay. Okay, so I'm actually going to... I am actually going to use this now. Well, that's giving me a load of HP back. I, I, I'm using it now because it's now starting to deal like 15 damage a turn, which is ridiculous. Um, inflict too slow. Do that. Do that. Do that. I think he should be down pretty soon. So this is the first boss. He's not really that big of a deal. Um... Oh, he's done this thing. He's done. He's pinned me. Basically, pinned means you have to use. Have you? Have any of you, have any of you ever played? Um, have any of you ever played Hearthstone where you play Demon Hunter and you you get like a bonus bonus for using the, the the cards on the outside of your hand? Basically, what pinned does, but it forces you to use the um the uh, the cards on the outside of your hand. Do I want another fireball? I think maybe it, it benefits from my um. It benefits from the uh, the card that reduces something to zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heal again. That takes me now to full health. I'm at 94 HP, which is really nice. And this this is like the town that you'll get to see for like two or three acts. And after that, you don't get to see the town again. So it's kind of like a very short-lived town. Uh, there's the alchemist who can sell potions. You can heal at the inn. Consultine Eveline. She'll give you a load of lore, but I'm just going to pass through because I've done the lore. Um, the blacksmith. So I quite like the blacksmith because upgrade all your basic attacks. Costs 50 gold, but it's really good if you don't intend on removing your basic attacks. I do not intend on removing my basic attacks because I want a scholar deck. A scholar deck is basically where you have more than 20 cards. And you also, um, fire decks generally tend to do this thing called uh, burn, where they burn off cards in the deck. Um, oh, okay. So like, there are three choices. This is the new DLC, the Vesparin Mansion. I've never done this before, so this will be my first playthrough of the Vesparin Mansion. I've done the other two. Um, I much prefer the bandits to post the druids. I find the druid area really annoying. But I've never done this one. A rich buffet. A drunken reveller. And a suspicious guest. What does a rich buffet do? I guess I'll come back to it. Let's just kill the drunken Rivella. So he's not burning right now, but uh, should we do that and just inflict too slow and then block for the time being? Not the best opening hand I could have ever had, if I'm honest with you. What's this? Anger? Okay. Why has he got two anger? Oh, I've got two anger. Okay. Donk. 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 Okay, so apply some burning. Okay. Okay. Nice. Oh, my anger's just going up throughout the... Uh, throughout the... Interesting. The deck's getting quite expensive. I need to somehow get uh, fleeting thoughts into my... Uh... I somehow need to get fleeting thoughts into my... Um... Into my opening hand. Spell Coil. Vile Blast. Eldritch Flame. No, none of those. So take the opportunity, because otherwise it will go away. Solid, just out of view. Interesting. I have no idea what I just did there. The Countess. 
a shrine, but I've got to take the opportunity. This is interesting because there's some different there are some different opportunities. Surge. Recall the rune's nature. Look for magic art look for powerful cards. Interesting. I've already got Chalice. I've had Chalice of Blood. Under three random basic attacks. I think I'll just take Chalice of Blood again and upgrade my HP. But I did lose a Surge card, which is a bit annoying. So let's see if I can find another Surge card. Upgrade a card. What can we upgrade? Fireball. Searing Ray, probably. Just deals four damage. Fair enough. Shrine. Surge card. I need a surge card. Select a card to remove, then upgrade all cards sharing the types. Okay, so. Magic action. I could remove a fireball and upgrade all other magic actions. Sweet. That's fine. I think that's fine because I had too many of them. I want to kill some things before I go and investigate the what are other sort of story, story parts of the mission. I think. But I'm actually going to play that this time. I'm a little bit screwed because I've lost a surge card, and surge cards give me more mana. So I need to somehow find a way of getting more mana. Toxic rumor, great. Oh, God. It's going to be one of those types of people. Well, at least I have... Well, it's another toxic room. Oh, you don't actually have to play it. They just disappear after the um, turn. What happened to all of her... Um, what happened to all of her... Burning? Why am I not... I'm not... Oh, she gains for each corruption in her, my fo her foe's deck. That's pretty nutty, actually. Why is she... Oh. It's cleansing and affliction, which is really bad for me. I'm not going to take haste because it might apply to her shitty rumors. <laughs> right, I need to need to deal a load of damage here. It's really annoying. Oh, she's cleansed on my burning. Yeah, fireball. Okay, it's going to be. Real friggin... I'm going to have to go heal. So I have to find somewhere to heal. Okay, I'm so close to killing. Okay, she's just cleansed. She's really annoying. But I should be able to kill her next turn. There's, there, there are these challenges in the game where... Oh, friggin... God, like, really? Come on, guys. Okay. Fireball. What I wanted to see. She's dead. Okay. Delay. Fireball. I'll have another fireball. Why not? Opportunity. Two nobles stand close together. They argue voicefully. Listen in. We cannot remain idle and wait for the demons to strike. The Dawnbringer is a clear sign the gods have taken notice. Okay. Yep, yep, blah, 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 blah. 
Sacred Zest. Okay, I'm guess, I'm gonna guess Rich Buffet. Remove a card, drink the wine. Eat the food. I'm gonna have to take the food. Suspicious guest. I'm gonna approach him. They are of this stranger. Okay, strange painting. A painting of a merchant. of a soldier blah 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 same thing same thing yeah painting of a hooded figure oh no okay well that sounded interesting Count Vesparin confront the lord of the house the Countess, the Lady of the House. Ah, you must be one of my husband's guests. Yes, I am. What look would that be? All right. Well, that was that was pointless. Indeed, I panicked. Why did you panic? Okay, so I have to duel a spectral hand. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this first. The only sh the shame is that it just kind of knobs my mana. Wait a second, what was that? Deal 20 damage reduced by one for every damage that you take. Well, that's not good. I'm just gonna heal myself. Okay. 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 Uh, I'll take the haste this time. Oh no. Am I, am I can't. Oh, I've, am I might. I probably had the. Um, oh. Okay. Wait. Okay. So already done seven damage. That's better than nothing. Uh, I'm also going to take the haste again. I'll take this. I'll deal damage. I'll deal damage. I'll deal damage. Nice. He'll deal zero damage to me. Okay, and fireball. He's dead. Cool. That wasn't too challenging. Okay. Upgrade all magical actions by one. Whenever you cut it, you upgrade the existing copies two times. That's pretty good. Fine. Choose a card in your deck. Reduces any cost to zero. Oh, well, I like, I like the idea of chasing, uh, choosing that enchantment and turning it to zero. I think I might do the enchantment to zero this one. That just makes it much more playable. Cauterize. Remove all your blending. Gain one flaming and fire cast. I mean, those are those, none of those seem very good. Uh, okay, now I know I have to start. I need to attack the challenger. Oh, okay. So I've never seen that before. The challenger forces me to attack them. Um, let's just deal some burning straight off the bat. Three days. That means I can only use three cards this turn. Not too much of a problem because I'm just going to do that and then that. Got to remember that I've also got that maximum HP card chilling in my inventory. Uh, so this is... Have I got dazed again? I've got dazed again. But I am going to do this followed by this and then this. I can't use anything else but I'll keep the, um, the mana till next turn. Deal 24 damage. Okay. Well, that's not great. 
So how much damage is he going to deal to me? Three. Six damage twice. Ouch. These things are getting a little bit harder to kill now. Quarterize, conduit, flow. Uh, not very want any of that. The alchemist is there. There's a spectral guard. I kind of want to find the blacksmith again, but I haven't seen him. On even turns, gain one haste. Illusion. Have a 25% chance to take no damage from basic attacks. Well, isn't that delightful? Okay, cool. Well, we did a load of damage in the first turn, and we generated some... We generated some bleeding. Uh, oh, that's pretty grim. I guess I'm just going to blast him. I could really do with um, healing. I'll take fleeting thoughts just because I'm getting slowed all the time. Phase shift. That's this turn though, so he didn't quite do that properly, did he? Boom! Boom! Nice. I'm not getting any good fire cards. There's a rich buffet, but I think I might actually be okay to take this guy on by myself. So I, I inflict three burning straight away. Um, do I want to... Do I want to use that yet, or do, you think, do we think we can take a couple more hits? I think we can take a couple more hits. I think. Yeah, because I'm going to heal next turn, so that'll be fine. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Right. Can I kill him this turn? Too slow. Uh, he will die, but he might deal some damage to me. All right, now we're going to have to heal, hopefully. Spellcraft, Singe. I think that's fine. Spellcraft's pretty good. I need to get to 20 cards somehow. Yeah, I'm going to the buff. Oh, my God. Am I going to die here? I didn't realize that this would be a frequent occurrence. Um, Right, well, we just have to try really hard to not die. Yeah, I'm just finishing this. Five, ten minutes hit max. Um, will that gain my health? Oh my god, that was terrible. This is a really, really, really bad. I'm dead, I think. Do I just fireball and then... Hope that he doesn't kill me. I have to just fireball and hope that he doesn't kill me. <laughs> okay. This is actually okay. This is fine. Do you gonna draw a card? Yeah, that was probably the right move, if I'm honest with you. Okay. Oh, please let me heal. I'm just gonna take another fireball. Okay. I'm going to heal. Oh, thank God I got that talent, guys. Thank God I got that talent. Let's talk to this lady. Oh, we've got to kill her. I thought I was just talking to her. I was baited. I'm going to block once. I need to block twice. Interesting. She uses all types of magic. Okay. Inflict one jinx. Deal three to five, and then deal nine. I'll probably have to heal again before the uh, the next turn. Uh, 
I still don't have Scholar. I need to add some more cards to my deck. Um, I will probably heal before the next one as well. Okay. She's dead. Fair enough. Uh, 78 HP is still pretty good. Inflict 3 burn. The amount of burning is increased by chain. Do I need to start adding chain into my deck? Inflict 2 burning. Bury a card. I don't even want to bury a card. I think for safety, I'm just going to eat the food. Alright. Count the sp Ah, oh, I forgot to use my hero power. I should have used my weapon power. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna end the video after this after this boss fight, just simply because my kids are getting a bit grumpy. So um, I'm going to do that, and I'm going. To, I'm just gonna. Oh my god! Apparently, apparently, you just. Yeah. What what do mirror images do? Forty percent chance. Okay. Thanks. Very useful. Extremely useful. Appreciate that a lot. Fleeting thoughts, finally. Still applying zero to this man. Okay, that's better. Okay. Oh, he's got more burning, but it's still taking a while. Here we hit him. What is this? Fine, 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 fine. Fine. <laughs> I'm just... I'm happy to take the three damage. Spectral block misdirection he's nearly dead I just need to hit him with one thing we hit that yeah okay fine good we didn't take that much damage and we leveled up that's nice greater strength greater intellect I am taking greater intellect because I just need another surge card arcane coil this can come at the start of your turn that actually might be useful because it's a chain card so arcane ripple is good but No, I'm going to take Arcane Coil. Okay, now we've got that we've unlocked the we've unlocked the the, the uh, merchant, which allows you to buy some cards, which is pretty good for me. Refresh stock. None of this is what I want. I just want... I don't want any of this stuff. Searing ray is nice. Pretty good. Yeah, I'll take that. That's fine. Leave area. Right, I hope you guys have got a good enough idea about what this game is. Um, it's a really, really, really fun game. I definitely recommend if you like deck builders that you give it a go. Um, it's, I'm going to continue this playthrough later on, but uh, it, it, fantastic game. Really, really good. Hope it um, has given you a good, good enough insight into what it is about. Um, and yeah, I hope that you, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to keep doing stuff like this, just finding good mobile games and playing them on the channel so you guys can see it. If you want to see any more of this particular game, just let me know in the comments. That'd be really awesome. I'd love to play, do some playthroughs with you guys, um, maybe live stream some playthroughs. Um, but regardless, you know, let me know um, if this was enjoyable. I'll see you soon.